right, welcome back to another episode of Footballing with Ben Roethlisberger. My name is Spence, and I am joined here, as always, with two-time Super Bowl champion Ben Roethlisberger. <laughs> my beard is looking really nice in that that's camera. A, that's solid right there. Thanks, Dion. <laughs> good there. He asked if he wanted to fill in some of the grays. I said, what grays? No, nah, man. It's a little salt in the pepper. No, nah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I started getting grays yeah. a couple years ago. And the last I and saw your beard, the, yeah, my beard. Can you see it? <laughs> what are you talking about? Is, is it coming in you good? Sh- I've known you for uh, like like five years. And I haven't seen you shave once. What are you talking about? Can you see it? Punch <laughs> in. That's thirty two years of growth right there, bro. What are you doing? <laughs> but I saw I saw like the first one like in my hair, and I was like, oh no, dude, that's a gray. And I thought, no, nah, man, I'm gonna let that ride. Absolutely, I'm gonna let you, that makes ride. Me, man. Makes me feel wise. Yeah. Well, uh, well, welcome back, guys. Yes. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, Last week was a phenomenal week. Epic. The last two weeks have been epic. Yeah. Epic weeks. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest. Guys, please stay tuned. L- keep listening to this because there's going to be a lot of really good insight. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff happening around the league. Football, the Steelers versus Ravens. Mm-hmm. I'm going to recap the game. But it's going to be hard to top Devo and Pounce. Oh, yeah. It's it, going it to be is. very hard to it top is. them. It's going to be hard. It, it was... Um, it was it was what a really really cool two weeks. I mean, being down at Bay Hill, once I was down there playing golf with my son at one of the epic golf courses. And thanks again to Bay Hill, the Saunders family, the Palmer family, everybody down there. Um, but to play golf down there and then have Pouncey drive like three hours each yeah. direction just to come on the podcast. Yes, like that's a true brother. And um, his pops was there and and just. So blessed to have him in there and, and the, to, to catch up and reminisce and laugh. And I mean, and, and for those that didn't like know, that is our relationship all the time. For I mean, Pounce was one of those guys that didn't really have many bad days. Hmm. Like he was always just kind of like happy and fun. And, and if he wasn't, like I could kind of get him going. But yeah. like he was, he was epic. And I love that guy. One of the best teammates. Um, just because he was that rider. I mean, he was he was there. We, as you, those of you that 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 saw it and watched it, if you couldn't tell that he was a ride or die yes, kind dude. of guy, um, just a great team, and not just for me, but for any of his teammates. I mean, that's just who he was and is, um, and just such a blessing to have him on the show. So that was um, awesome. And then obviously that was our most watched show, Pounce to date. Pounce was, yeah, yeah. And then of course we get James Harrison to come on. Yeah. And post some workout videos. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, we get James to come on, and he he guaranteed that he was gonna like blow Pouncey's out of the water. Yeah, he did. And I was like, I don't know, James. Like, it's gonna be tough, right? And sure enough, we're like our first. It's our first ever video over a hundred thousand views. Yeah, dude. And I think it's at like buck and a quarter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm sure he's gonna like want to take all kinds of credit for it, <laughs> whatever. But um, but so much fun to sit there and talk to him. And every time we get together, it never fails. We talk about our college game that we played against each other and the story changes every single time um how many times have you guys debated that oh <laughs> hundreds it seems like <laughs> but you know i love the fact that he says he works out one day a week and he looks like that those of you that yeah man I think we look pretty similar this week yeah you look swole bro i wanted him to like start flexing but it would have been weird i didn't bro because his arm was the size of my torso that brother <laughs> he's so like big. and he's so funny we've, i'm glad we got him to laugh because he you know he's got he's got this persona and, and he is when he played just yeah the mean tough guy never smiling you know just everything that's evil about football right. and wanting to like break well the time he, time he said didn't he try he said he tried to hurt he tried to give someone turf toe like he tried to smack him on the back of the foot and well, give yeah. Turf toe. I mean, well yeah he's like because oh, you you told him <laughs> he told him, i can I know you're not trying to hurt nobody. And he cut you off and said, oh, no, I want to hurt him. Yes. He said, no, I don't want to injure him. I want to hurt him. Yeah, I want, but I want to hurt him. Yes. So, but but thank you, James. Thank you, Pounce. Um, what a fun episode. I think the fans really enjoyed that, I hope. Um, but like, like Spence said, stay tuned. We're going to have some fun beers. We're going to start hitting. Uh, I have, I've only been told. Or I don't know what we're having, but I've been told that we're going to start some Christmas stuff. Yes, tis the season. Um, and that's uh, appropriate. I would like to notice my. Ooh. Coors Banquet glass full of golden delicious Coors Banquet. Ooh, that looked nice right there. What you got there? Oh, pinky out. Yeah, it's fancy. Ah, it's a fancy show, folks. Thank you. Thank you, Coors yeah. Banquet. Thank you to Creekside yes. again for helping with all the stuff that you guys do. Um, that looks so delicious. I, I got to jump in. Perhaps you should. Um, but it's going to be a fun one. Like, no yeah. guests this week. We are watching the um, Sunday night game, Dolphins uh, Chargers. 
So we'll comment a little bit on that. But we, we do have a lot to talk about. We about, do. Like said, talk about around the league kind of stuff. And There's all kinds of stuff happening around the league. I've been texting you all week because I feel like there's a new news story. But before we right. jump into that, I know you had a lot of stuff going on in your family. I pulled up to your house yeah. tonight. Yeah, what you see? The, your house looked like the Griswolds. Well, Brother, you got lights and you got the, you got the lights. I mean, you drive through this magical like Christmas tree forest. Yeah. You know those neighborhoods where you have to pay like 10 bucks and you just like you get the cruise around. Look at the start, you that. should start ch- <laughs> charging people point. 10 bucks. It's not, cr- let's say this, it's not crazy, but it seems crazy because we've never done lights before. Yeah, it's not, like that. it's not like over the top, but it, it felt magical. It's like you're walking through because you, well, you drive walking through your driveway. It's exactly what it feels Thank like, you. bro. That's going to look super dope in the snow. And then you walk in your house and you have I, which I thought was a fake tree because it looked identical to your tree last year, but it's not a fake tree. You guys cut that mug down. No, you guys did not. <laughs> I cut that tree down. Okay. <laughs> we we did. We um, the general you. <laughs> the general yeah you. The family sort of cut down. I had a lot of help. A lot of uh, spectators, little little spectators, and people tell dad cut that right there. I'm like I got it, guys. I'm down there on the ground with the saw. They're like dad, you're almost you're right over. There. Cut the branch in the way, dad. Yeah, I know, guys. Um, yo, we, we did, we got our Christmas tree. We got our Christmas lights. Um, now that Thanksgiving's over, I will listen to Christmas music. Are you I'm that, a, are you yes, that guy? I am. Have I we talked about that before? I think we have. Yeah, I'm sure we have. Yeah. I'm not a, I'm not a pre Thanksgiving Christmas person. Yeah. I don't want to skip over the thankfulness of Thanksgiving. I get that. I don't listen to Christmas music, but as soon as it's over, bang. Yeah. Flip a switch. I, I've been the same guy. I think recent last couple years I've been impatient. Because we would go get our Christmas tree on Black Friday. And, okay. And then it's Black just... Black Friday right for Thanksgiving? It's the, yeah, is it right? It's the Friday fr- after? I don't know, dude. Okay. Yeah, so, but yeah. So that's after Thanksgiving. That's, that's what I mean. So, so, okay. but, but, but then last year, Ken's was pregnant. And so we got it early just in case. Okay. You know, and then we're like, you know what? That's super dope. Christmas uh, should come early. So yeah. I'm not as loyal to it, but I do respect that. I do respect that. Yeah. And so we have it set up. And um, so we, we decided to get our Christmas. We had some, some awesome friends coming this weekend. So we wanted to get it up and kind of going before that. So we went to Buchanan's Tree Farm. Awesome people out there. Um, thank you guys. We go there, you know, we've gone there for the last, gosh, for, for quite a while to get our tree. We go out and we cut it. We go find, you know, they take down the tractor and the, the little hay ride and they give you a saw and you go out there and you, I'm going to bring on chainsaw next year, by the way. I was say, did you hand saw that? Yes, I hand saw that thing down. Good for you. Yes. That yes. elbow's still working then, huh, bro? You got it. Pocket yeah. knife. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, that thing, you know, the thing was, that thing was, that thing was, that thing was that big around, but. Well, well, they don't, they can't see your tree. This isn't like a Chris, normal it's, Christmas it's, tree. It's, it's like a 13, 13 footer. Have you guys ever been to like 13, Rockefeller Plaza? Oh, <laughs> I don't go that big. That's not that. It just, it's really nice shade. We had to, I mean, we, you're out in the, you're in the middle of the, the tree farm. Yeah. There's a lot. And, and of course, you know, with the kids that they're at that age where over here, dad, mom over here. And you walk over like, that is nice. Over here, over here. And you're just going, and you're just like round and round and round. And so, um, <laughs> we kind of narrowed it down and, um, the one that we took was one that I kind of found. And then Benjamin had one that he found. And we kind of narrowed it down to those two. And so we had everyone vote. And, of course, Bailey and Bowie are like, we like dads. And Benjamin was like, and Benjamin was good. It did have a couple of little spots. But um, and I think we got it up. I forget what happened. We got it up. And, and Benjamin, and we said something like, oh, I forget how he said it. Like, there's one branch that's kind of low here. We got to cut off. He's like, mine didn't have that. <laughs> like, dude, really? <laughs> but um, no. So yeah, I was down cutting that thing down and then dragging it out. Um, I did the the, the guy. Um, they came down and helped. So, um, but yeah, thank you Buchanan Tree Farm um, for that. And our our house is festive now. That's huge. How did you put? Did you drive it home in your truck? Drove home in the back of the truck. Dra- got it out of the truck. Dragged it in the house. Put it up by myself. Did you? Yep. <laughs> I did. I, I basically was inspired by James Harrison. I just like I did like a press. I just yeah. pressed it up. It is you know, it's not work. a big deal. Yeah. Well, you and him, you and him bench the same, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just a. Is it is it jerk. true when you, when you guys were playing together, you actually were giving him tips on working out? For sure, I was showing him how to do some some things, and he won't he won't give me credit for that as, <laughs> as usual. But it's okay. It's okay. Whatever. That's huge. Well, we are into the Christmas season. Are we uh, start right now? We're, I mean, should let's we go right now. Let's, let's jump into the first beer right now. You want to do it? Let's I jump do. into the first beer right now. I thought it was a good practice to do to start introducing some Christmas beers. Yes, it is. Uh, because I, I thought, like, do we wait until it's closer to Christmas to do like the Christmas episode? Yeah. But then I thought you're going to want to drink these beers throughout the Christmas season. Mm-hmm. And if we like some of these, 
I wanted to inform our viewers and listeners. So they can get early. To, exactly, brother. You get it. This it. first one I thought was fitting. It's from Evil Genius Brewing Company. All right. And uh, since Genius. people say you look like Will Ferrell, um, I've heard that before. this is called Santa. I know him. A famous line from the movie Elf. Oh, right? yes. Yeah, so yeah. it's, it's <laughs> Santa. Maybe, I know maybe him. after we try this, I'll tell my Will Ferrell story. Oh, dude. I have a Will Ferrell story. Dude, I've I've hesitated on asking you to tell that story because I think you said on some other episode it was like the rookies do something where like the celebrity yeah. look like or whatever, and you said the Will Ferrell. And I know that Will Ferrell story because yeah. you told it to me, but I didn't want to have you okay. tell it. But okay. if you're willing to tell it, because that's I'll the funniest it. story. I'll tell it. Okay, so Santa, I know him. It's a festive saison. Uh, saison. 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 It's saison. With it's an ale with rose hips, chamomile, and black currants. Oh, that's right. And so this is out of uh, this is brewed and canned by Evil Genius Brewing Company at Pittston, PA. Oh, Pittston. Pittston. All right. All right. So while you're doing that, I want to give a shout out real quick. Can I? Of course you can. Um, I want to shout out Mitch. Um, And I don't know Mitch's last name, but Mitch provided me with some uh, a beer from West Virginia called Almost Heaven. Mitch Um, did. Mitch did. Yeah. Just name Mitch. I just want to say thank you. Oh, yeah. Um, almost heaven amber ale. It's like a, it's like Mountain State Brewing Company. Like three different beers, and I had two of the three. One was an oatmeal stout that I passed on. I don't why 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 yeah, do I you? like oatmeal? Um, <laughs> but no, I passed on that. But but thanks, Mitch. Give me a shout out. They're, he's a fan of the show too. So, Mitch, thank you, brother. You enjoyed Ooh. that though. It was very good. I yeah, did. I enjoyed it. So, so this is what the beer looks like. Beer cam's back. Beer cam. All Just right. Saison. Yeah. So I don't know. Let me check the ABV here. So, and we got educated that that Saison just means season, right? Oh, we did? Somebody told us. I felt like somebody. Really? Yeah. Festive season? Listen, the people who watch the show actually know about beer. Festive season. Yeah, so it's festive. That would make Saison is not just a sour beer. Typically they are, but it's, it's, it's. See, you may have read that from the people. I don't remember ever hearing that. The people, hey, me and the people, thank you. Me and the people are like this. The millions watching live around the world right now. Thank you for your input. Uh, seven point two. Okay. So this is this is tuck in. And yeah, before I do this, I um, I don't really read a lot of the comments. Spence does, and I would like to say that. Then he'll tell me what's going on. I would like to say this: there were a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of people that want us to when we watch the game to put it on and to comment like, on yeah. it while it's not necessarily live, but like yeah, yeah, we can't. One, we're not live. And two, we can't even post it in. Like, people are like, put it in the corner. Like, we can't. Unless y'all want to pay the the probably million dollars we would need to pay the NFL to put it on. Yeah, so I was told by somebody, and I don't know if this is true or not, but I was told that they charge, the NFL charges $50,000 a minute. Yeah, I mean, why wouldn't they? I would if I was the NFL. (laughs) So we would love, 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 love to give you that, (laughs) ladies and gentlemen. But we can't. Yes. I'm so sorry. Yes. Anyway, so, sorry. I just I yeah. know that was a, that was a big. That's one of the big like people want to do, and so we want to do it too, guys. One of these days we're going to do a live one. We are going to go on location do a live one. We won't like so you'll be able to watch it on your own TV and like do it. Yeah. And we even talked about maybe doing like a Super Bowl live one, but we'll see. Ooh. Anyway, anyway, Ooh. anyway. anyway sh- did I say that loud? Oh, what's this beer, Ben? So it's a complex Belgian style ale that kisses mm-hmm. Santa Claus. That seems unnecessary. Why? I don't know. Why? Well, I, nothing should be because of Santa and Mrs. Claus. <laughs> right? Our holiday saison is brewed with rose hips, chamomile, black currants, and dark candy syrup. Complex mm. and intriguing. This is the one who broke dad's leg lamp. Ah, dad's leg lamp. Yeah. Right, here, here we go. Oh. What do we have? I um, I didn't think. Hold on. So this is complex. Hold on. There's levels to this. Wow. I didn't think I was gonna like that. That's very good. Is it really? It's very good. I, what do you get from it? Um, is that accurate? Because people don't realize you're an, you can actually you're actually a very good wine taster. Um, it's I don't know. It's it's good. It's, it's definitely complex. Is it? It's definitely complex. So this is probably above my. Do most rate. season, most like Christmas beers, are they pretty like heavy? Yeah, like ABV. 
Yeah, because okay. they, they want to warm you up. Okay. Right? It's like getting snowed in around the fire. You think it's going to hit you real heavy, but it doesn't. It's got a little light. Yeah. The first mouth taste, the first mouth feels very light. Let me say. I taste it, the black currants, I think. Okay. Uh, it's very, the candied syrup is what. It you almost, get the syrup? Yeah, it almost feels like maple syrup. That's, that is very good. And I like I, that. I typically well do not like these. Evil genius, you did it. That's very good. good so, ladies you. and gentlemen, if you want to try that, that's, 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 that's it's a good one. How would you rate that out of 10? I could drink that. That, yeah. it, that feels light. Yeah, it does. Like, it feels light. If it, it had um, a light finish, for sure. Yes. Um, uh, golly. I think that's drinkable. I think that's a great Christmas beer. Um, I'd give it a seven, six and a half, seven. Yeah, yeah that's I mean, solid. Yeah, I think that's a good rating. Yeah, I think that is, uh, f- for it being a a winter beer, it being 7.2, that does not taste like 7.2. No, not at all. Mm-mm. No. I'll co-sign the seven. I think that was very good. I, again, I'm not a big, I don't like yeah. the spice, the, uh, the spice stuff. That's not spicy. But it's not. It's a hint, but it's got like, mm-hmm. it's just got the spice flavor, but it's not like overly, that's that's very good. Chamomile. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's well done. Evil Genius, thank you. Thank you, thank you. That was, that was, that was good. Yeah. Um, I want to jump into some stuff that's going on in the league. You see me struggling over here? Yeah, you yeah. all right? No. Oh, I need to give one more um, thank you. Yep. Shout out. Um, when we're talking um, this last week, Ashley and I went to an unbelievable um, um, kind of gathering retreat thing up at uh, Windshape. It's in uh, Rome, Georgia. The Kathy family has a uh, retreat place up there called Windshape. The Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A people, yeah. And it was called the Fatherhood Co Mission, hmm. and it was unbelievable. Just a bunch of like. Um, different um groups not a bunch but you know a decent amount of different groups around the country that do um different kind of family um mostly father fatherless fatherhood fa- anything relating to father um uh, mission work yeah um and so it was awesome to go there to, to meet some amazing people we got some awesome books um some great resources and people just so just thank you to mitch and and all the people at the father commission for pouring into us and um, we just felt really touched leaving that. And just because just of what we're doing with the farm and the yeah. father-son retreats and anything like that, it just felt like, man, we went there and got to meet some amazing people that, that helped us kind of get some understanding and some thoughts on where we want to go and um, you know places we actually get, we can go visit some of these places. And, and oh, it's so just really neat. So just want to say thanks to all them. I actually, when I was there, I got to meet um, Jared Lopes, who wrote a book and does a podcast called Dad Tired. Yeah. Great book. Um, now I did his podcast this week. Oh, nice! And it's gonna—I think it's airing like um, the night, maybe Monday. Then it's Monday. Is the nineteenth of Monday? That's a great question. Um, I'm gonna check right now, and everyone's gonna yes. <laughs> so it's airing. It'll be on um, Monday the nineteenth. Dad tired podcast. I'm going on with Jared. So if you guys want to check that out? Just a great. He's a great, awesome resource and a good dude. Um, does a lot with like fathers. Yeah. Um, just helping young men old old men whatever just just kind of really try and be better husbands and dads so it's pretty cool so yeah that's huge man and for shout s- out Jared. some people uh that might not be aware of what you're doing um because we did mention it briefly early on the podcast but i don't think we've actually talked yeah, about it talked into about it, into it yeah uh you mentioned going there and getting some information for what you guys are doing Do you want to share just what you guys are doing and then maybe even what what you know, prompted you and Ash to take this step to, to actually start doing what it is that you guys have going on? Yeah, the interesting thing, and after leaving there, we wanted to go there to get some direction. You know, we want we know we have this amazing farm. We want to do some, host some father-son retreats, something that can connect fathers and sons together by using the outdoors because I'm a big outdoor person. Uh, I've got a great relationship with my dad. Obviously, I have two boys, and I think um, two big things missing in the world are, are a father figure and the outdoors. And so we want to be able to take, um, have, have a place and just have a small group of men take their sons hiking, fishing, horseback riding. Um, we've got a garden. We've got chickens. We've got fruit trees, just all kinds of stuff. Just um, there's a pizza oven. We've got a big grill over there to do fr- you know, fish fries or barbecue, whatever you want to do, bonfires. And, you know, let 
let father and sons build a fire together and, and roast hot dogs or marshmallows, whatever it may be. So just kind of giving some, giving them a chance to connect a little bit. And so that's been on our heart to do with the property that we have over there. And so this opportunity to go to, to this, this fatherhood co-mission thing came up because it's right up the alley of what we're doing. And so actually going there, I think we had this thought that when we went there, we would um, come back with answers exactly what we want to do. Mm. I think leaving there, the thing that we figured out the most is that we're in a time of like, wait, mm. wait till it's just right. Don't rush it. Don't force it. Um, you don't have to do this. You don't have to do that. God will put it on our hearts exactly what and when mm. and, you know, and, and that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. So, uh, and maybe our, maybe our farm is best to just be like blessed for other people, other, other groups, um, uh, that want to come in there. Hey, listen, here you go. You can, you, we're just going to bless you with this property you know, go do this yeah. thing. So whatever that may be in relation to like the family unit, that's kind of big on our, our hearts, the new, the Roethlisberger family foundation, uh, we just started. So anything kind of revolving around family, which is a, it is a very broad, which is intentional, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, maybe we can just bless people with a place that they can do their mission. Yeah. So no, I love anyway, it was, it was awesome. Great retreat. So is there any, I know it's still early. Uh, I know, um, just because we've had conversations about it. You guys are still building up the farm. It looks beautiful. It's an amazing space. It's very peaceful. It's very, I can't wait to see what God ends up doing with it. Yeah. Uh, is there any place that people can get more information yet? Or is that something that's to, to be determined uh, or, or still building in, in the process? Yeah, we're still building into it. Um, I think it's, I think it's RFF7.org. Okay. I think is um, I'll, I'll confirm that as we talk. Yeah. Um, but I'm pretty sure that's kind of where you can get some information. We don't have a lot yet because uh, we're just literally building this thing up. Um, but that's kind of at least you can get some RFF. Oh, two, there's two Fs in RFF. Um, just that's that's the place you can get some. You know, see some resources that we're doing. Yeah, yeah that's exactly what it is. RFF7.org. Okay. Um, and so you can just kind of see a little bit of what we're trying to do, what we want to do. Uh, and basically just we're trying to forge stronger families. That, which is um, amazing, man. I, I've been very privileged to watch this kind of come together. And I'm, I'm very yeah. excited about it. So that's the only reason why I asked is because every time I felt like we've gone somewhere and you've had the opportunity to speak on it, mm -hmm. immediately people are like, I freaking love that. Yeah. How do I help? Oh. How can I get involved? Because and we need that. This, this trip was no different where we had some amazing people that are like, Hey, how can we pour into you? Hmm. And we're like, we don't even know yet. And that's, <laughs> and sometimes that it, it's hard to do when you're in a room full of guys and, and couples, cause it's not just guys. It was couples. When you're in a room full of couples that seem to have it, like they got it all. They got this, they got this, they got this. And you're like, man, I'm not even sure yet. You know? Mm -hmm. And I think it's, like I said, it's not easy to do, but we had to do it. Like, listen, we're still trying to figure it out, but they, you know, just praying for us and giving us resources, connecting us to people, all that stuff has been just such a blessing in, in a short amount of time um, since we met those people a week and a half ago, two yeah. weeks ago. Dude, so, that's awesome. Yeah, man. it was awesome. Yeah, so I'll put that website in the description if you guys want to check it out or if uh, you guys are, are doing something like that already and you have mm -hmm. resources or whatever. Uh, I, I know uh, you guys are on the journey of developing this, so feel free to, to, to tap into that and stay plugged in. Stay, stay plugged in, obviously, to this channel uh, at Full Balling with Ben. Uh, is the Instagram handle. When this stuff launches, it will be on both those platforms uh, and to, to educate you on um, how to get involved, how you can experience it, share it with others. So stay stay locked in for Did that. Do you know what else we did there? What else? Am I allowed to talk about this? It's, it's This is your oh, show. You show, can forgot. literally do whatever you want. You could leave right now and it's come back. It's football. Like, it's yeah. football <laughs> we, so do you know the, um, um, the Kendrick, have you heard of the Kendrick brothers? So they're the ones that did like um, Fireproof and yes, War yes, Room and yeah, all yeah, those yes. movies, right? They, Courageous. They're producer, our director. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I think it's two or three brothers. So they were there. They were one of the big people that were part of this. So they were there. And then the guy, the the, the group that did um, Mercy's Me, I Can Only Imagine, mm. the movie, right? They There's a new movie coming out called, I'm looking it up because I remember, Jesus Revolution. Okay. And we got to screen it. Oh, where? Is it, it dope? It is really good. Really? And so it's going to come out like I... I, I and I know it sounds like it's this big, like, but it's a true story. And it's based, I'm reading this, it's based on the true story of, of a national spiritual awakening in the early 70s and its origins within a community of teenage hippies in Southern California. The Jesus movement. Yes, it, yes. Is, it is based on the Jesus movement. Really? But it's, it's the true story of, um, I forget the, the past, there was like a pastor that, um, that went down, I forget, um, Chuck Smith, maybe uh, Chuck Smith, and like a guy, dude's named Lonnie Frisbee. His, his name's Lonnie Frisbee. Like the hippie. 
Of course they, yeah. I mean, of course listen, he is. Lonnie I think I'm to talk Frisbee? about this. I'm gonna make sure I'm allowed to talk about this. <laughs> but it was. I'm not gonna like give anything away. But but I recommend when it comes out to see it because it's it's based on a true story. It's not like like listen, it's just oh I'm gonna go watch this like Jesus movies religious yeah. movie. Like yeah, it's a religious movie, but it's a true. It's based on the religious movement of like in like Southern California when like all these hippies right. were like going to concerts, seeing like Janis Joplin and all these people, and yeah. then all of a sudden like they wanted to go to church and they were getting baptized in the ocean. I think it's called Pirate's Cove in Southern California. Like, I think they're still doing it today. Really? Like, there's this clip in there of, like, hundreds, maybe thousands of people on the beach just getting back, boom, boom, Dude, that's that time. Dope. It's really, really cool. So I'll make sure I'm allowed to talk. Well, before we, we have to edit that part <laughs> out, but I'll make, I'll make sure we can talk about it. But we got to screen it. It was so cool to watch. Really? So it's a, there's some big, I mean, uh, Chelsea, um, not Chelsea, Chelsea Grammer, Grammer? Kelsey Grammer. Kelsey Grammer. Is Kelsey in Grammer? It. Kelsey Grammer is Frazier? in there. Yes. They got Frazier? Um, Jonathan Rumi, who's the, who is Jesus in the, um, the chosen, the chosen oh, that dude's is dope. in it. Like there's more, there, you'll be dope. watching. There's people and you'll be like, Oh, I know that person. I know that person. I know that person. Like, that's how I felt when, cool. well, that's why I felt when Barton them got a, uh, Oh boy. Uh, Dennis Quaid. Dennis Quaid. Yeah. I was I like, know. bro, y'all got Dennis Quaid. <laughs> <in here?"> like, <laughs> so anyway, that, do right. you know when that movie comes out? I think I next know. year sometime. Okay. Cause I'm so going to, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to. Um, anybody that's in Swift, I want to see if I can get them to put it in the, that theater. Oh, that'd be so good. Yeah, I, it, it was really good. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Really enjoyed it. So I, I will say this. I know we got to jump into some football because yeah. this is, this is <laughs> the show. But I'm, I've been very excited about um, the faith-based art that has been happening and being involved in culture mm -hmm. in the last five years. Yeah. Because I, I, I'm just a firm believer. If you guys don't know, uh, we're Christians. Uh, and I'm a firm believer that w that we should just be the most creative people because yeah. it's a hereditary trait from our father, right? Yeah, so amen. the fact that that these movies, this music, the art is coming out and it's just dope is very exciting to people me. People didn't realize that like you, it's actually kind of cool to be a Christian. Like you can, <laughs> there's some really cool people that are Christians and right. some like really cool things, right? Can come out of that stuff too. So yeah, well, you and you realize it's like the lens to look through life, man. It's not like yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna fall into a sermon here, but. Uh, I, I definitely You'd be a good one though if you did. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, this man can speak. Yeah, that was in a former life. They they used to let me, but uh, in this life, we're we're talking football, and I want to jump into it because I felt like typically I, when we're talking about like football, I'll text you a handful of times throughout the week. I'm like, yeah. oh man, wasn't that crazy, yo? Correct. Blah blah blah, blah that happened. But I felt like our text thread in regards to news around the league was pretty extensive this okay. week yeah, because there's it. all kinds of stuff that was happening. I think one of the biggest one, if we're going to start in the AFC is Von Miller mm. has an ACL injury. And then why I want to start here is because at the very beginning, if you go back to episode one yeah. of football with Ben Roethlisberger, oh, you no call the bills in the, winning the Super Bowl, Josh Allen MVP, which I still think is possible, mm -hmm. but this happening to Von Miller, what does that mean for the Bills? And how, does, how do you think that affects the, the AFC playoff picture? Um, I, I think it means a lot. Um, they have a very good defense. He is one piece, one cog in the wheel. Mm -hmm. But he's a very good cog in that wheel. <laughs> um, one of the best pass rushers in the game. Um, and, and, and been doing it for a while. You know, just, just kind of all that. But I think... Um, the interesting thing is he hurt his knee and then they said it wasn't going to be that bad and then all of a sudden they went in to do like a minor thing and they realized it was torn I think and so I mean that's it's awful because now that surgery now he's out he's going to be out most of next year too um, and so that's that's tough but I still I still think they got a great team I still I'm not changing my, my pick for MVP I'm not changing my pick for the, for the Super Bowl I still think they can get it done I think it just maybe doesn't make it as easy or as black and white as sure. you will. but that's awful you never like to see a guy get injured like that and uh, i feel bad for vaughn um, but i know if anyone will, will bust his butt to get back it's him yeah and i don't know i'm sure you didn't but he was on um pat mcafee show and uh, i didn't get to watch the whole interview but i was watching it and he had mentioned that he was considering retiring after the season until mm. he broke his or he tore his acl no he's got and he's like huh? yo man i can't can't do that mm. no one wants to leave that way yeah you know so yeah, so, I mean, I still hope uh, – they played well today. You know, obviously, we're able to, to take care of the, the, uh, the Jets here. But you win the game you're supposed to win. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, if you're going from, um, you know, talking about Von Miller, I'd like to jump back to his former team, which I think was a huge story going – I mean, this was, this was wild because I felt like it happened 
so quickly. And I'm speaking, of course, none other than Baker Mayfield. Oh, man. Heading to Los Angeles. I thought that, that was a story in and of itself. And then the game played. What, what is your take? That is one of the crazier stories um, in the NFL in a long, long time. The dude goes to the to the Rams, which maybe wasn't as surprising to me because I knew that they were, you know, who knows what's going to happen with Matthew Stafford and this, that, and the other. He gets there on, I don't even know what day he got there, to Monday, Tuesday, it doesn't matter when he got there. And, then, and I, next thing you know, like, I was kind of just interested to see if he would get in. And next thing you know, it's like the second series, and he's in the game, and I'm like, did someone get hurt? Like, what in the world's going on? They're like, throw this dude. And it's not like um, Sean McVay's offense is, like, easy. No. Like, it, it, it is a very complex, and Sean is very, like, I mean, he's got a grip on that stuff. And so I'm like, I wonder what he even knows, this, that, and the other. And so he gets in there on short notice, and not only does he play, um, you know, he's got to do things like the red zone. I mean, all this stuff that's got to happen, which is not easy on short notice. A short week, mm-hmm. um, not even a short week, like a couple days. He doesn't even know the guys that he's throwing to. Um, there, there's some things you got to figure out, and then he ends up going in and taking them down the field, ninety some yards. You know, t- at the end of the game, it throws a touchdown pass to win the game. Like it is an unbelievable story, and I mean, I am. It's like it's like one of these. Well done, young man. Yeah, like, that is awesome. Like what he did in such a, that on a couple days. I mean, it's it's crazy. It's it's really cool, and it it's just one of those stories that's going to be like, holy cow! If it was so weird for me because I'm so conditioned to root against Baker just because he's been a rival for so <laughs> yeah. long that I found myself rooting for him just because of I think it was said that he he had the playbook for 42 hours. Yeah, I've done not that. even a full two days. I mean, outside of the obvious, like. Yes, you don't, you know, you don't know the complexity of, you know, McVay's offense, your the relationship stuff. What what is the most challenging thing for a quarterback going in and do? Because at what at what level is it? It's just football, and you're calling out routes. What's something that the rest of us normals wouldn't wouldn't know is is challenging? Yeah, but the thing about it is, like his offense is not a normal offense. Like the the the, the things he calls in the <laughs> name. I see you trying to sneak in. <laughs> oh. This is high level production, folks. Oh. Welcome to footballing with Ben Roethlisberger, <laughs> where the homies just roll by. Well, the homies just roll through in the middle of a show. <laughs> What's up, Neem? What's going on, brother? Good to see you. You made your football debut. Nima, Nima. He tried to blend in with a yellow he tried beanie. To sneak in. He got a neon yellow he tried to sneak beanie on. Here. <laughs> he tried to sneak Holy in. Holy cow! We interrupted our show. <laughs> Gosh, all the people. Sorry, all the people live around the world that watch that. Yeah. Um, to, to do that. The play calling to learn it because it's not like every offense is the same. Like every offense has some some offensive ha- offenses have numbers for routes. Some have words. Some have concepts. Some you know there's a lot of different things that go on. So just to go play the game and understand what is going on, um, you know when 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 Sean calls a play to just be like okay I got, okay okay there I, I got it I got part of that but I got to tell the guys who to block and all that stuff. But to, to go down in a two minute drive, like you don't even know the plays. <laughs> like, how are you? It's not like he just scrambled around and was making plays. I mean, the dude is, I mean, he let him down the field. And it was just like, this is unbelievable. And so, um, like I said, that was, pe- you, people will not understand how hard it is what he did. Yeah. What he did is so incredibly hard. If he was a running back or a receiver or a lineman going in and playing on two days, you could be like, okay, like that wasn't easy. Like, good for that dude. That was tough. Mm. He's a quarterback that has the ball in his hand every play and had to go win the game in a two-minute drive. <laughs> Crazy how good that was. Crazy. Tip Crazy. of the cap. Oh. What, what, is, what do you think that means for the future of uh, Baker Mayfield? Is that something that, again, it's tough to say what his future in L.A. looks like because we don't know what's going to happen with Matthew Stafford. Right. Uh, but is that something in his mind, is he saying, you know, let's, let's, let's do what we can here because I don't know if they're still in the playoff picture here, but let's do what we yeah. can here to, to maybe get a contract for next year or hopefully get picked, you know, put stuff on tape to get film for another team. Yeah, I mean, what's I'm, his future I'm like? going to assume that he's going to play – um, like I said, not knowing what's going on with Matthew, assume that he's going to play now for the rest of, this, of the season or at least get some more games. So it'll help him get some tape out there. 
Um, I would say it would help build some confidence, but I don't know the man's lacking confidence. Maybe, <laughs> maybe though, that after all the stuff that's kind of happened, like going to teams and not making it, maybe his confidence is down a little bit. I don't yeah. know. But um, it, it should help build confidence, and, and maybe McVay will – you know, want him there and keep him there as a as a backup or what's going on with Matthew. Like, who knows? But it, it can't hurt what he did. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. And you know what? At the end of the day, if he ends up, which I'll never root for any, for, I'll never want this to happen to anybody. But at the end of the day, if he ends up like if it fizzles out and he doesn't even like ever really start or play again, it doesn't really matter. Like that story yeah. will last and should last for a long, long time. That that was so so cool. Yeah, I, I don't remember the last time I stayed up to watch a game um, involving two teams that I had no skin in the game. Like, I had no interest. Yeah, of course. But, no one no, no, but it, was, it was legitimately like a movie. I think the last question I have on that subject matter is probably the most important one is uh, wh- what are we doing headbutt and dudes with, hum- with helmets on? What are we doing? <laughs> I don't know. What are we do- why, 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 That's why are we like doing his this? new thing now, I think. So now I feel like he, he did it. In, I don't know, he may have done it before, but I remember seeing in Carolina he did it as a backup and everyone was like, like this dude's crazy. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. he kind of gave him this, like, uh, just yeah. But but, but brother, or, uh, I don't know what you want to say. That know. only works until you meet an actual crazy person. Yeah, like I mean. the, like, and I'm not listen. I've never met Baker. You've played with played against him a handful of times. I get it. Pumped up, juice is flowing. You got no helmet on. You headbutt somebody with a helmet. I get it. But if like if you do that to an actual, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if you do that. You're really crazy till a real crazy person shows up and you yeah. get real normal. Yeah, I know. I, I I don't I don't know. And now now I feel like that's going to be his like his like thing. I know, but at what point is keep doing? That's it. what I'm saying. At what point? <laughs> dude, at what point is it? Is it like oh my gosh, I've done this so much that like I have to keep doing it, but my head really hurts. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know well, at I mean? some point maybe he'll like he'll put his helmet on and do it with his helmet on. Yeah. And just kind of like, cause that, that's very normal. Right. So maybe he'll just kind of graduate to that. He's to like he, the smartness of putting <laughs> right. a helmet on when you headbutt somebody if, with a helmet. He stops doing it and he starts playing like trash. Yeah. Well. <laughs> he got a concussion off of the field. Well, oh my go. goodness. Uh-oh. This might be one of the craziest plays of all time. Ty, there's no one catching Tyreek Hill. Not at all. So if this, go, so anyone watching this game, it's the eight minutes, 845 to go in the first half. The Dolphins run the ball. Ball cut fumble, ball. I don't know how to explain. Ball comes out. Three or four people are diving on it. Next thing you know, the ball comes out of the middle of the scrum. Like the ball just comes squirting out. Tyree Kill picks it up, runs around everybody. That's the guy you touchdown. want. Touchdown. Yeah, that's the and guy. Yeah, you that's the one guy you want picking up the ball and ran <laughs> for a touchdown. This is going to be unbelievable. So Gilman strips the ball. Ball's definitely out. Okay, it's definitely yeah. a fumble. And now there's just a – oh, okay, show the replay. Tyreek's not even really doing anything. He's fake block. Like Hug the guy. Do. Okay, get out of the way. <laughs> like Ball's most out. Do. No one knows where the ball is, and it just squirts. It, that it literally is yes. like a rugby scrum when the ball – Yes. All you rugby people that are watching, that watch this show, that, that subscribe to this show, whatever that's called when the ball – when they when they go shoulder to shoulder and the ball squirts out, whatever that's called, please let us know in the comments I'm because sure, I'm so curious. sure there's a better that adjective just we can use. I don't know if the ball is squirting out. I oh, sorry. Like, one, of those, one of those things we're going to talk about again. <laughs> but that is unbelievable. Yes. That they got on the board on that play. Yeah, as soon as he got it, it was night oh, night. No one was, no catch was catching. Him. That's it's wild. So fast. Well, yeah. Uh, I have a couple more things uh, around okay. the league I, I'd love uh, some, some insight on. Um Let's go north in California to uh, Miles Stomping Grounds mm-hmm. because they don't got a quarterback either. Mm. San Francisco 49ers, Jimmy yeah. G gets hurt, man. Uh, this is a very good team. Mm-hmm. This is a very good team. And as a, as a fan of the 49ers, I'd like to see it. I don't like to see Jimmy G. I know, man. Hey, <laughs> that, that, uh, is that arm a little, a little loose? Yeah, Feeling right? I thought about it. Yeah. <laughs> I know, uh, you know, this is the second quarterback to go down. Seems like it's happened a lot this year. Yeah. What's your take on uh, on Jimmy G? Well, that team is one of the better teams. I don't, I don't I don't even know what their record is, but they're one of the better teams in football. Like their defense is really stinking good. He's buried, and they've got a lot of weapons on offense. They just buried um, the Bucks today too, and they did bury the Bucks today. Um, and and they did it with with Purdy. Um, <laughs> And he miss, he's Mr. Irrelevant. Mm-hmm. Did you know that? Mm-hmm. Uh, those of you that don't know, Mr. Irrelevant is the last pick in the NFL draft. And um, by the way, that guy, did you know that the guy, the last pick in the draft gets like, does he still get taken care of? Like all kinds of... It's in Newport. They do a whole what week of stuff for him. In he gets like gifts and... Wait, so if you're the last dude in the draft, mm-hmm. 
you you get like a parade? Kind of like a little bit like a parade. There's like events. It's it's been the same guy has run it. <laughs> Is this like a participation celebration? <laughs> yeah. It's like we're sorry if you're the last guy drafted. We're gonna give you all this stuff. <laughs> okay. But all the people that aren't drafted that don't get you don't get that. But yeah, so. By the way, this 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 is our first uh, filmed in front of a live studio audience with Nima. Yeah, yeah so we have Nima. So just so you know, Nima, what what is your actual job title? So I don't get this wrong. Uh, I'm CMO at uh, the agency that, that rep. Okay, so he's rep one. CMO at yeah. Rep One Age. So so we're asking we're asking this question to to somebody who's very knows, well qualified to yes. answer this question. So. so as we as we look over here and ask the questions, we're just asking Nima for clarification on yes. things. Yes, but. Yes, yeah, so he gets all this stuff. But anyway, I, we kind of went off on it. But he, um, so it was, was going to be interesting to see what was going to happen. Right. I know that, like, they obviously liked the dude if they took him. And I thought he played well. He's been hanging in there and, and you know, staring down the, you know, the blitz and, and getting his. He throws it. I thought he he made some great plays today. Um, they blew out the Bucks. Um, I mean, it wasn't even close. But, uh, and obviously their defense is really Best good in the league, right? and I saw uh, Debo Samuels got hurt today I, I heard that he avoided maybe avoided something really bad that's what I, what I heard but well, I hope so but they're a really good football team and um, you know just I don't know if, if um, Jimmy's going to be out for the C I don't know what's going mm-hmm. on with it but um, that's a team that, that has real consideration to win yeah. a Super Bowl I think though them and the Eagles and the NFC is going to be it's going to be fun to watch you get throw the Cowboys in there maybe but it's going to be fun to watch those guys do you get nervous if you make a, a, a long playoff run with a third string quarterback? What do you mean? Do you get nervous? I, I'm, I mean, as a team, as, yeah, team? as a team. Well, you know, as a he's a rookie, and I, and I don't, you know, it's you, you always get a little bit nervous because there's there's preseason football, there's the regular season, and then there's the postseason, and each season. Gets a little faster, a little harder, a little mistakes are magnified. Mm-hmm. You know, literally, like you go from the preseason to the regular season, and I've I've heard rookies be like, "Holy cow, that game was like it was so much faster," or guys are playing harder, or whatever it is. When you get to the postseason, like you can't afford turnovers. You can't. I mean, you might if you if you can win with a turnover in the postseason, count your blessings. Mm-hmm. Doesn't happen very often. Um, and, and you just you can't afford to have a bad game, which which is one of the reasons I think football is one of the most unique and toughest sports to play because every other sport has a series, three games, five games, seven games. So you could afford a bad game. You could afford two bad games, really. Yeah. I mean, if you were if you were the Bulls in the '90s and you had MJ, the best player in the game that could dominate any time, if he went and had a bad game in a series where it's like, okay, somehow they held him to 20 points and y'all lost, and it's like, okay. Like, but right. if, if, it, if it, it, he's going to come back, he's going to come back and get you. You know what I'm saying? And right. that every team that has those the, the Kobe's, um, you know, the, the baseball. I mean, any, any sport you think of, the Mario Lemieux in hockey, the the Crosby's, the Gretzky's, you're not going to get them having multiple bad games. Right. Two. If you get two in a seven game, you're like, boy, we got lucky. But football, you can. Ha- Tom Brady can have a bad game. Yeah. The best of the best can have a bad game. And so, if you have it on the wrong day, it stinks. I mean, it's, it's no good. So, um, that's why I think this sport is so unique because you've got to play, and then you get to the postseason, you have one game to make it. So, it just, you know, it's going to be tough for them. I mean, things are going to get faster, mm-hmm. and you're going to play better teams. Um, and, and so, it'll be interesting to see if they want to go into the postseason with, a, with him or if they're going to try and, you know, if they can get a veteran to help. Because having a veteran that's been there before, yeah. it's a big deal. How's your arm feel? Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, I mean, as a 49er fan, just asking, right? That's what you're just asking. Oh, well, as a 49er fan, I okay. just I'm always just perusing. You know what I mean? Anyone perusing. who's been there before, capable, yeah, has some rings. <laughs> These are just what we're looking for as the faithful. Okay, um, no, but but you do bring up a good point. I feel like there has been a lot of teams re- in recent history that kind of go they go the regular season with their team and then they start stacking and padding the team in the postseason maybe people that haven't been um playing as much maybe they they haven't found a team i I, i'm thinking of obj Mm. right uh somebody that i feel like was a major contributor to the chargers last year yeah 
and and winning this Rams. Ha- oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, excuse yeah, me. Yeah. We're watching, watching the Chargers. Yeah, yeah, the Rams, so the Rams, yeah, yeah. the Rams uh, last year, and hasn't been on a team all year. Mm-hmm. Do you see two questions? This is twofold. Do you see him joining a team in, in the playoffs? And do you see this this habit kind of being something in the future where these elite ca- caliber players don't play in a regular season and kind of get picked up later on in the year? Well, he's yes, he's going to get on a team, and and I, I mean, he has his choice, I believe. Right. I mean, he, he can go, you know, and so the teams have to decide if they want him to play uh, after coming off an injury. But, you know, the interesting thing about that is guys don't want to have to miss. Guys want to play. They want to be out there collect because he hasn't collected a paycheck all year. And so he's going to get in the post. What people don't understand, too, is we get we get paid only during the season. Like during the offseason, we don't get checks. Um, and so we get paid either weekly or biweekly. And so those are like whatever your contract is, that's when you get paid. When you get in your in your – your check ends when the regular season ends. Okay, your check that whatever your contract is. Sure. When the postseason comes, everybody gets paid the same. Every position, every team, everybody gets paid. Now every round it goes up. Sure. But it's 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 not. Guys are actually making most guys like an OBJ would be making a ton less in the postseason. So the only, that's so that's the only thing I would say about what you're saying is that if I didn't play during the regular season, I go to the postseason. Like, yeah. yeah, if you're going there just if you're just wanting to win rings and yeah. only play a couple games, then I guess you could take that chance. But you're not collected. Like the checks you're collecting are going to be way less than like less than even a half a million dollars. Like like yeah. probably two fifty or less for all the games hmm. combined. And there's no something like that. I mean, it's it's not it's nothing crazy. I, I know. And I, excuse me for people out there that are saying well, that's a ton. Of, it is a lot of money. Yeah. But not in comparison in to comparison. what they could make during the regular season. Sure, because OBJ could very very yes. easily sign a multi year. Yeah. But is, is there any level of signing bonus or that they could acquire just to be on that team? I don't think that. I mean, I, I'm not a, an expert at this, but I, I don't we think, could ask. I think we could ask Nima. Nima sitting right. Sign him now. You could, uh, yeah, but, no, but it wouldn't be a lot. But it's not going to be a lot. So if you yeah. sign them, if you sign them before the playoffs start, yeah. you can give them some level of yeah. bonus, but it's not going to be a lot. That's right. Mm-hmm. And then you're subject to the the standardization of all the payment for all the players, and it, which is very interesting for like a vet who's signed, especially at the quarterback position, signed these these oh, yeah. crazy deals, and these rookies are like, yeah, man, keep this. This is bigger than my I'm normal. I'm telling check. you, you get you get practice squad guys and guys that are are rookie. You know that sixth or seventh lineman, and they get to make they get to the postseason, and all of a sudden they get like his practice squad gets a check too in the postseason. So everyone's like, man, like please, like let's go, let's go. This is extra money that you're not accounted for. So um, that's a big deal for some people, and some of these guys that aren't making it, like man, to have a chance to make like like a practice squad guy. Or, or, or not even a practice squad, but maybe like a, a a rookie guy that made the undrafted guy, yeah, that makes the team. And his contract is league minimum. Also, he gets to the postseason. He might make more money in one postseason. Than he's gonna make all year. Dang. So that's huge. Yeah. You know. So it's a, it's a big deal for for those guys. But so I just don't know how players could. Do. I think if you get a guy like a, like an OBJ or someone like that that just wants to play, you know. But you, I, they're not gonna keep doing it over and over. No way. So you don't see that being kind of a, a normal standard of practice for no. elite levels? It, it'd be like something where like a James Harrison's like someone calls him like, hey, we need you for the postseason. Someone got hurt. Can you come play three games? Yeah. All right, sure. I'll come give it a shot. You know, like that's what, like something sure. like that where where it's just like um, like that kind of a thing, you yeah. know, not not necessarily someone like, I, I don't know, that, that's, that's maybe a bad example, but something like that. I think it's a great example, which reminds me, James, uh, if we make it to the playoffs, what are you doing in, in February? <laughs> <Lift it. laughs> he, hey, according wrestling. to James, he, <laughs> he only lives one day a week. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, anyway. that, yeah, that, well, no, that, that's very interesting because I, I, I was curious about that because I, I heard somewhere, I don't know if I read it, um, I want to say Twitter just because he's on Twitter all the time, but that that he didn't want to play unless it was like high pressure situations. He's like, why would I waste my time here regular the season when it doesn't really Some matter? Feel that way. You know what I mean? And, and I get it. As a, an elite level competitor, you want to play for championships. Mm-hmm. I get that. Um, but the, the financial back end is something that I feel like you cannot disregard. Yep. So, Cause that's very interesting. I did not know that. Mm-hmm. So uh, I want to jump into this next beer. Please. And then would you like me to get you another yellow belly? Oh yes. That would be, that would be delightful. Thank you. Coors banquet. Oh, you mean one of these delicious Coors banquets? 
Uh, Golden, nice. Colorado. Is that what they're? Is that what they're out of Nemo? Is it? I feel like it we should. Like it should be if it's not I mean, it's not. That fake ad read sounded pretty good to me, right? Yeah, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna dial up this next beer here. So uh, Nima, just to get you in on 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 the uh, on the party, we're doing all Christmas beers. Oh, I saw that. That's the Santa. That's the yeah. That's that's this joint from from El. Uh, this is from Evil Genius. I, th- I think it's okay. I think it's near Philadelphia, right. Pittston, PA. Yeah, man, listen, tis the season. Yes. You know what I mean? Tis the season. Um, this next one's unique. And I think that, uh, oh, dude, you're going to hate this. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> I'm sorry, dog. Hey, listen. Every time, it seems like he does this. No, nah, bro. Every time that I get a beer for you, I, I, I've heard that like what three you mean? or four times I hear, oh, you're gonna hate this. What you talking about? Look, look how, look how. And I'm over here. Oh, I played myself, dude. I, I didn't play myself. I played you, dog. My bad. Look at this. This is, this is called one site. Let me go beer camp. Uh, hit the wrong button. This is called peppermint bark yeti, which I thought Very was great. Denied. Um, the 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 bad part about this is as I turn it, it's an imperial stout. <laughs> I didn't, dog, I legit, listen, let me explain myself first. Get out. Let me explain myself first. Get out. Oh, no. <laughs> I almost grabbed a different one, too. I was like, no, I like that label better. I'll dial you, I, listen, I won't dial you all the way up. I'll get you a little halvesies. Oh, dude, that is midnight. That is not... That's like twelve thirty right there. That's not it. What do you want? Anything not here? Yeah. Oh, there's yeah. There's stuff on the right. If uh, you want, if you want like pop or soda, it's up in the up in the kitchen. Go up that. You can go up that way. I'm not gonna like this either. Yeah. This is. I, I'm so mad right now. <laughs> I just. I got it off of the. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our <laughs> last episode. <laughs> All of you that were uh, <laughs> subscribers and stuff, thank you. We were doing so good. Sorry, James. <laughs> We were, we had such oh. good momentum. All right, let me just let me just see what we're we're doing. Look, okay, as the temperature drops, Yeti waxes the runners on his sled while visions of bold imperial stouts dance in his head. While the sleigh bells ring and the and the first flakes of snow begin to fall, peppermint bark Yeti is the antidote to winter's bitter pall. Dude, that's what you're experiencing right now is winter's bitter pall. This is the antidote. All right, the con- the inclusion of peppermint chunks, vanilla chocolate, and lactose rounds. Why do we have to have chunks, <laughs> brother? And and lactose Those rounds. What if I was lactose intolerant? Well, you wouldn't be able to tolerate this then. Uh, it's roast. It's, it has roastiness and bitterness, and it normally associated with Yeti, making for a sweeter holiday themed version of our legendary imperial stout. Oh, so it's like Yeti vomit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I'll put that there for beer camp case. The Imperial Stout people want to... It's from Great Divide, and the Great Divide is from Denver, Colorado. So, um, so you know they lean into it, because people in Denver, they don't play. What, Ben, let's punch in for the people. What, dog, I, I've done good. I've gone I, like seven weeks without an Imperial beer. <laughs> Dude, you're so act- dude. You're actually mad about this. This is so awful. <laughs> Sorry, this is ruined. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go take my Christmas tree down. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> this is this is awful. I don't know why we're doing this. Why we do a stupid show? We had such a good thing going. This is a great show. This was a great show. Gosh, this is just unbelievable. We'll smell it. See if it. I it, don't want to even smell it. What if it's not bad though? No, it's Yeti, it's Yeti vomit. This is gonna. It's be, called chunks. I'm gonna be honest with you. I just smelled it. It smells like dish soap. Dish soap? Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what to think. This that, is just brother, so that stupid. smells like... Stupid. This is so stupid. This is so smell... Stupid. Tell me that's not dish soap. Oh. <laughs> am I... Am I just... Like... <laughs> Make sure you eat your vegetables. This is going to be so <laughs> awful. There's no I way... I was so... Like, I was loving the I... show, man. We've been having such a great... Not even this show. Just the, the, the football in general. Yes. I'm going to make a shirt that says, I hate stouts. I think people, and I've heard 
people say that I'm not a real and then like beat my nut like craft beers because he doesn't drink stouts. You know what? Take your stouts and go home. I don't care. It's awful. It's not good, dude. This is gonna be. This is. I can't wait. I'm. Yay! I'm so excited. <laughs> not, dude, Cheers! There's, Happy holidays. There's no way that's have good. a holly jolly. I'm not, God, guess, what I'm not, guess what I'm not doing for this one. I'm not letting it breathe. No, I'm dog. I'm not swishing it. Don't cheat, Yeti. He no. might, come on. Forget Yeti. Do I take it all the way? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I think I got to go all the way ahead, yeah. but that seems like a big drink if I go all the way to the head with it. One, well, just two, three. We can't, you got to actually taste it. You can't help. <laughs> You didn't even breathe in between that. There's no way you tasted that, dude. That's so awful. Ah. Oh. It's got my nose hair. There's no way that you didn't even get to taste this. You yeah, I tasted everything. It was awesome. <laughs> dude, was you, like, held your you, know, hey, you held your breath great, the whole time. Hey, great divide. Thank you. Great beer. Great stout. Let's move to the next one. Next question. It's like it's like my tongue. Like I think I can scrape it off my tongue. Oh, it's it looks like oil. It is oil. It's motor oil. I'll give the people what they want here. Please do. Oh, I can taste like I can taste it on the back of my. You like that, huh? Good for Actually, you. Yeah, that was bad. <laughs> I thought the oh. first. Hey, the first sip. Oh, that's why it it it, it finishes like coffee. <laughs> that. So that so that's why you hate it. Okay, so now we know. So we know that. I feel that in my stomach. I'm sorry, people. But that's 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 going to come out the wrong way too. <laughs> yeah. Um. This is this is not terrible. Um. It tastes like if you drink a black cup of coffee after you brush your teeth. Well, I brush my teeth, but I don't drink yeah, coffee. So it's um for all you coffee drinkers, you know what I'm talking about. That's what this tastes like. It's not bad. It is nine point two. And I'm just thinking um, functionally. Oh, sorry, it's nine point five. I'm thinking functionally. If I'm hanging out at a Christmas party, no, no, that's that. sending you home early. No, no. How no, would you rate no, it no, out of ten? No, minus three. <laughs> you got hit it in the negative. You couldn't even give it a zero. Listen again, great divide. I'm sure you have amazing beers, and I would love to try something else sometime. But that I'm never drinking again. Yeah, the label was great. The label looked cool. I'm a Yeti. I'm a fan of the Yeti too. I, That's I, why I picked it, dog. I thought we had something going, and I ruined it. I ruined it for you. I ruined it for me. Nima's over here. Nima, you want to try a sip of this? Nima, try this. You like coffee, though. I do love coffee. Here, oh. just take a sip. Yeah, we're not a, having any more. Yeah, take a sip I'm, of you it. You can. Yeah. Have, what do you? He's like, ooh, I love this. Watch this. Tell me that's not. You know, you you drink the coffee after you brush your teeth. You know what I'm talking about. Where are you at on that? Nima just took a sip. Get out. Nima went back for a second sip. Get out, both of you. What do you? Mean? That's. I think I can do this. Ugh. Okay, Nima's Nima's response I is, I think I can do this. I don't, as a coffee guy, I think I can maybe have one of these. Yeah. How do you drink your coffee? Do you put stuff in it? Yeah. Hot. Did you say hot? How do I drink my coffee? Hot. A lot of people like it on. I'm just saying, yeah, you're Southern California, a bunch of iced coffee, coffee people. People want the iced coffee. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, you guys are all so weird. Yeah, Holly little, people are weird. Little French vanilla. A little French vanilla cream. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. California sauce. <laughs> he said California sauce. Oh, you guys are. I do. I, I should. I don't know his name. I'm sorry. Can I? Can we do another one like right now? Do you want to? Please. This. Okay, but can, you, you got to open it. I don't have an opener. Don't look at it though. Just here. I'll hold it. So yeah, there you go. Yeah. All right. It was a twist off. He couldn't twist it off. Oh, yeah. Because he drinks uh, I have, coffee. I have, I have these weak little hands. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, this is. Oh, right back to it. Come on. This is Southern Tears. Southern like, All right. I like some Southern nah, Tears. It's the 2 Xmas. It's a double spiced ale. Oh, damn. Yes. With orange peel, ginger root, cardamom, <laughs> cinnamon, fig paste, and cloves. Well, um, what kind of paste? Fig paste. Fig paste. Never had fig paste. No? Oh. You ever had fig paste? I've never had fig paste, no. Nima, fig paste? Never. Never. It's a new thing for all of us. I need to get, I need to level up my, my paste game. All right, here's what we're working with. Based off the description, here's you. Okay. Uh, I, I think that, 
Do that, I need to get you a... Oh, that's what look, we're look looking at. That. Two Xmas. Um, I think it's going to taste... I think this is going to... Did gonna, you say Spice Double IPA? Did you I know. say Double IPA? Do, it's just a Double just Xmas. Just put the beer cam on it. What are you talking about? It's put the just beer cam. Double, it? I don't think it's an IPA. It's a Double Spiced... I know I didn't hear what you said. Double ale, sorry, double. I saw double. Yeah, yeah. So, I, double it, ale. so it might, it might. You know how they had that that uh that two X IPA? Yeah. It might be the Christmas version of that. Oh, okay. I'm not sure. Okay. But I think it's gonna taste like um, the Elf. Oh. Based off the description. The Mad Elf. The Mad, um this this uh, ABV is much less than the Elf though. This is eight. The Elf is like. This is nine. <laughs> the, the Elf. This smells like Bed Bath and Beyond. <laughs> Oh yeah, you don't you don't like, like that smell is delightful. That's that's a candle. That's cinnamon candle. That's the elf should just come with a free Uber. Oh, the elf is hey hey uh, hey Beal. <laughs> How's that elf treating you? <laughs> Been elf recently. <laughs> Love you, Beal. Okay, don't get elfed. Don't get elfed. That smells. Good. What are we working with? You really smell? Oh yeah, dude. That, that smells, smells so that good. Smells like a candle, that smells dude. Smells so good. Okay, here we go. Oh yeah, you're gonna love this. It tastes like a candle. Yeah, too. dude. Like if I were to, if I were to peel off a piece of candle and eat it, that's what I think it would taste like. But not it, but not in like a disgusting way. That's very good. You know how you get stuff that's like almost like potpourri and it's like, oh, that's not yeah. it. Yeah, it's like too fragrant. Mm. No, this is this is way better than the elf. This I is think really good. What do you get? Wow, dude, the back. What is that in the back? A clove. Clove. Our palates have grown so much. It's amazing. We're so good at we this. We're so good at this. <laughs> um, man, that's that very is not good. overly. It's it's got a, a teeny bit of spice, but not bad. But not but you, but very 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 drinkable, folks. Uh, Southern Tier, you guys did it again. Yeah, they they don't tend to miss. Um, they yeah I they have where a, Southern Tier is. They have a spot down by your old office. Do they? On the north side or north shore. Before they told me to take my box and take my yeah. plant and pack up out of the they office. Said, they said, thank you for your time. Thank you for taking your severance pay and get <laughs> out of here. I don't even get a parking spot anymore. You don't have a parking spot anymore? <laughs> I like that. Southern Tier, great job. Thank you. Yeah. Nate, How, you want to try it? You might as well. I mean, you're here. You might as well have a little sip. Hey, when you ball, you drink it all, so yeah, you got to finish ball, that. You drink it all, finish it. <laughs> Well, you're having a sip. We're not telling you to finish the oh, beer. <laughs> well, we don't we don't expect you to be a part of the show and finish it all and do what we ask you to do. That is a candle for sure. <laughs> that, that is a candle, candle for, for sure. sure. <laughs> Which one do you like better, Nima? Coffee. <laughs> the, you like the jo- the first joint? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Coffee. <laughs> said, hey, Nima, let me tell you this. Hey, that's because that's a man's beer right there. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> In us, people that don't like craft beer... <laughs> Drink the candles. He said it very Halloween spice. Yeah, like no, ma- no, no. You don't know your beers. <laughs> Maybe it's that's why you're not. A, that's why you're not on the show very often, <laughs> because this is not a Halloween spice. This is a Christmas spice. Yeah. Mm. Halloween spice is very different. What's the What's the we're major? Pro- we're, we're professionals. This is much less scary. Yeah, I thought you used to eat fig paste. I don't. I, do you brush, I brush my teeth. You brush, teeth. you brush your teeth with fig paste. Like, I, um, I love, but I love how we ended up in that joke at the same time. <laughs> and I actually take that like like good for me because you're actually really funny. People and so the fact that I got that. there with you like that yeah. makes me feel like proud. I'm like comedy. Really I'm comedy writer funny. You know what I mean? Like yeah, like I think you're funny. Like it's it's funny to other comedy writers, but not funny to the general public. Oh, I disagree with you. I think you're funny. Oh, thanks, bud. This is, I like this. Now, I wouldn't, I mean, it's 8%, so. You, you can have one of those. You can have, like, if you show yeah. up at the party, you're like, hey, man, Merry Christmas, sweet, ugly sweater. Have one of these joints. Nine and a half percent. Yeah. My goodness. Dude, Mad Elf is like, Matt Elf's like 14. 14 or 15, the one on yeah. tap over there. We don't, do we you, don't. Oh, you do have the Elf on tap. The Elf's on tap back there next to the banquet. Dog, you, you know what your new name is? King Christmas. From now on, ladies and gentlemen, Ben Roethlisberger, King Christmas. I like it. That's very good. I, th- I actually like this better than the Mad Elf. Yeah, I do. yeah. Mad Elf is Mad Elf is very good, which is Trogues, mm-hmm. obviously. Mad Elf is very good. It's very spicy. It's got a 
I like Mad Elf because it has so many different flavors. When you drink it, you taste this, this, and this. And the next time you drink it, you taste this. Like It's got so many different flavors. It is very strong. You don't mm. want to drink many of them, right, Beal? <laughs> um, <laughs> you will get elfed yes. if you drink too many of them. Um, I even think I even think my boy, uh, our boy Brett, got elfed one time a long time oh, ago. Oh, okay. But so. I don't, I can't confirm or deny. But oh, okay. Um, but but it is a very spicy. It's a very strong beer. Um, it is good. But that is that's I like that a lot. That's very good. That's that's very drinkable. Yep. And I'll say, Trogues, uh, you don't tend to make bad beers. All of your stuff that I've had is delicious. The elf, listen, I'm a little guy. I can't handle the elf. Yeah, the elf you is. Know, you gotta be. You gotta be a man. You gotta be a man. Listen. It's a me because I don't drink stuff. <laughs> well, as long as we know. All right. Well, I think I think that was a, a solid redemption. We can keep the show going, and if we're gonna keep the show going, we might as well talk about some Steeler football because today. Hold on, my mother-in-law texted me. I need to pause the show to okay. answer my mother-in-law. What a good son-in-law, Ashley. Are you watching this right I'm now? I'm interrupting. Ash, are you watching this right now? It's a mm. moment. It's a momentary pause. If if you guys are watching, we're this not at pausing home, the show. We're gonna we're not gonna edit this. No, out. no, no, no. no we're but just pausing the show. I'll say this: if you guys are are watching the show at home, I'm going to assume that you are watching it with a delicious, ice cold, refreshing Coors Banquet. This is the time in which you want to grab that drink and go ahead, take a sip, refresh yourselves. Man, that's good. It's never bad. Course banquet. Oh, at the time of filming this podcast, they don't sponsor this, by the way. We just no, really we're like still it. not sponsored by anybody. But <laughs> we just really enjoy the beverage. <laughs> we do. <laughs> uh, yeah. So reset your palate. We do have other Christmas beers to try. I was going to save some of those. Um, but I will say this though: that the Yeti joint is still lingering on me. I don't know. It's not good. <laughs> I mean, what do you want me yeah, to say? It's, yeah, it's a tough one. What it's a like tough one. It's not good. I mean, Nima likes it. It's well, what does that say? Yeah. So let's jump into uh, uh, let, uh, let's jump into some Steelers football because this was the first time okay. the Steelers played today at one o'clock. Obviously, we should have done the podcast during the show or during Dur the game. During the game. Oh, dude, that would have been great. I think we're like undefeated. The podcast. Yeah. 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 Three. Three. No. No big deal. Um, <laughs> so. This is the first time, which I thought was very interesting, the first time that the Steelers have played the Baltimore Ravens without you under center. Before we jump into what was the game that unfolded, mm -hmm. I don't know what to call it. Um, what, is, what does that rival me, rivalry mean to you? And uh, was it weird to, to see, it, see it happen without you out there? Yeah. Um, I think they showed some stat during the game. Um, that since like 07, the, I want to say it's like, and I, I, I'll screw this up a little bit, but I'm sure everybody watched on TV. It was like, we've won 16, they've won 15 or something like, I mean, it was within one or two. Okay. And then the points were like 296 to 295. Oh, I, like something. Did you see that? It was, some, I mean, it's something so crazy, ridiculous um, you could imagine. And that's how that game always went. That game was always close. I mean, I could think of one, maybe two games where we, like, I, I had a game, and I don't remember what year it was, where I threw six touchdowns, and it was kind of like, that lopsidedness just didn't happen. Sure. And um, so when it did happen, that game, I was like, oh, man, this is so much fun. Got like, him. Yeah. Um, but uh, that game, that rivalry was always so special. Um my first ever game was was in Baltimore that I came in for for Tommy, um, and I played against Hall of Famers Ed Reed, Ray Lewis, um, Suggs is going to be in the Hall of Fame, um, Haloti Nada. I mean Bart Scott was over there rushing, um, and I'm gonna I'm, I'll, I'll forget guys. And it's no disrespect to those guys that are out there, but like the the people that we played that rivalry was just so special and. That rivalry, I've mentioned before in this podcast and, and talked about it, that rivalry in that game was never dirty. It was never cheap. You got your butt kicked, and you were sore for two weeks after that game. But it was always like, a, I'm going to drill you, and I'm going to help you up because I, I don't want you to be down. I want to keep playing against you. Yeah. And, you know, that if we played a game and Suggs wasn't out there or um, uh, Ray or Ed wasn't out there, 
we were like happy in a sense, right. but then in the other sense, it's like, no, I want to play against that guy. And I know they would say the same thing in games that I wasn't out there. Like they probably were happy, but they're like, man, I want to play. I want to be out there against him. Mm-hmm. And so um, that rivalry just always meant something special. And, and I, I don't know if it still has that that feel if, if guys know that tradition and know what it's like and, and this, that, and the other, but for a while there for, for a good 14 or 15 years, that rivalry was so special and so much fun. Um, it, I, I just, I, I, you know, it, it just was it's such a neat rivalry. Was it, was it weird to watch it from the sidelines? Yeah. I mean, I, I've, uh, unfortunately I've had to watch a call, watch Charlie batch win in Baltimore one time, which is really cool. Charlie. Um, I uh, to to watch it from the stands, kind of you know th- this this time was definitely different. Um, it, it just didn't like to see the stands. Yeah. Um, I'm not used to seeing like this in a, for a Baltimore game to see the stands semi. I mean, it, it felt like it was not half, but you know, it just didn't feel like it was typical. Like typical of that game is a, a Sunday night, Monday night, Thursday night. Like it it brought it mm-hmm. and it brought the crowds. It brought the TV. And tonight or today, it just felt a little different. Mm. But um, it didn't disappoint in the sense that it was a, a good game. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we came out on the wrong end of it. But it was still it still showed um, what that what that rivalry is. Yeah, man. Um, let's let's jump into the quarterback situation because I feel like it's indicative of what's happening around the league. But it was also happening to both teams that were present there. So you had Huntley, who was who was in there for Lamar. Uh, he ends up getting injured. And and forgive me, I don't I don't. Remember the the third string quarterback's name? Yeah, he came in at later yeah. in the game. Uh, obviously, unfortunately, Kenny get gets hurt, and and we had that kind of you know stutter step there where he went into the tent. Guess you know, on TV they said he cleared concussion protocol, I guess, came yeah. back out for a series, mm-hmm. and then left, and then Mitch comes out. Um, you know what? What was your take on the quarterback situation that you saw today? Well, it's it's kind of one of those things too where. Um, Lamar obviously is one of the one of the better players in the in the NFL. One of the most excuse me dynamic players, um, explosion, um, fun to watch. So when he's not out there, it's like okay, let's let's get this win. And um, you know, I think Hundley played really well last year, especially um, when when he came in for Lamar. And so uh, I think Kenny kind of we started out the game with Kenny. And he, the first series, like he was, he was running and, and, and picked up a bunch of yards running um, and then kind of got tackled once. And I saw when I, when he got tackled, it, I, I saw the whole thing. I'm like, Ooh, his head. And I saw him kind of slow getting up. And I'm like, he got his head slammed. And so he went to the tent um, and then came back in. I was like, wow, he cleared it pretty quick. Like, that's good. Um, and then when Mitch started warming up, I was like, okay, like maybe they're going to just kind of check him out again, which is always weird that you, you go to the tent and then you come out and you, you you obviously get cleared to play. You play and then you come out without even getting hit. He handed the ball three times and then just came out. Like, I'm confused at why did you – not him. It's not obviously – I mean, he obviously says I feel fine. But how do you get to – how do you – how are you okay to go in – but then you not okay to keep going. Like yeah. I'm not sure what what happened. Did, did all of a sudden he say like I'm I feel different. I, I'm having a headache. I'm I'm seeing double vision. Or did they just did all of a sudden the doctors or the maybe the, the specialist the NFL specialist up, upstairs said, um, listen, this is uh, um, pull him out because of whatever. Sure. So you never really know what what the deal is. But it just is always weird to me when a guy goes back and has to come back out. But um, Mitch came in. Um, it was obviously going to be a rough, it was a rough day for Mitch. Um, I, I thought that he, I thought he did really. I thought he did well in the sense that he completed some balls. He took some shots down the field. Um, he moved the, the moved the team. The team moved. Um, but when you're in Baltimore territory, um, I think it was four times, and you have three interceptions and a blocked field goal. You're the chance of winning the game is so slim. And uh, the first interception was not Mitch's fault. Um, he was going to to Muth on the backside, and um, it looked like the receiver on the front side like either fell or just didn't he didn't clear. So the spacing was off, and so it was actually the other guy's um, defender that that was able to make that play. Mm. So you you can't blame Mitch for that one. That just it's an unfortunate um, situation, and especially happens in the red zone. That's tough. Uh, I feel for Mitch on that. 
Um, the second interception, um, again, was was a, kind of a single high, uh, appeared to be a single high look. I'm I'm giving you all this just of watching it quickly. Yeah. Um, and, and he was and decided to go down the middle for whatever reason. And there's a will linebacker um, is kind of that free guy that doesn't really have anybody. And so you have to know if you're going down the middle on a sort of a single high look, you've got to understand that that guy back there could be cheating and robbing and cutting across. And so another one that you hate to say it's 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 not his fault, but it he's got to know that guy's coming. Yeah. Um, the guy made a great play on it, but but still it, that that's a little bit more on Mitch. Unfortunately, I think Mitch would even say like like. I got. I got to know that guy's there. I got to yeah. get it maybe a little quicker or whatever it is. Um, and then the third one, you know, he's throwing a, a go ball. He's throwing a deep ball to Deontay, and um, you know, he probably threw it more inside than he wanted, maybe a little deeper. Deontay got bumped a little bit. There's a lot of things involved, but you're taking a shot down the field, um, and actually we've got the ball on the one yard line. So you're like, okay, D, let's step yeah. up and, and stop it. And I think the defense, they they couldn't stop the run today. They they ran for over 200 yards, and I know I know exactly what. Tomlin's going to be saying, I know what our defense is going to be thinking and, and talking about. Like, that's one thing that our defense has always prided themselves in is not giving up a 100-yard rusher. Well, they gave up 200 yards of rushing today, and I know that they're they're upset about that. They have to be. Um, I'm sure it'll be talked about in the, in the defensive meeting rooms and, and, and Coach T will talk about it. Um, those are just things that's unacceptable in their mind. I know Cam and TJ won't be happy about it. And... Um, you know, it's 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 one of those things that at the end of the day, as as bad as it was, Baltimore gets the ball back. If the Steelers stop them, they're going to punt. And you you actually you have a chance. You give Boz a chance. Um, so it's it's just it's one of those games that I know they're going to be they're going to be all over Mitch. You know, and if Kenny wouldn't have left, um, who knows what would have happened. I didn't see Mitch do anything that that potentially. Can, it, it, there's too many what ifs. Like what if this? What if that? I mean, same thing. Like Boz gets a field goal blocked. You know, if he would have made that, they would have, you know, they ended up losing by two. But if you get the three point from Boz, it's, yeah, you, you can say that, but you sure. just, it's too many variables in there to say all that stuff. So, um, you know, and, and the other thing about that blocked field goal, I, I promise you and will bet you any amount of money that earlier in the week, Mike Tomlin, in the very first meeting they had to go over Baltimore, he said, blocking a kick takes a special kind of guy only certain guys can do it he said two a year will make you great so to be called great in football is like that's a big honor blocking two foot two two a year will make you great and i promise you anything he put calais campbell who's one of the biggest men i've ever seen in my life he put him on film and they watched five or six of him of his plays blocking a field goal or an extra point or something mm. i promise you they did and he said this dude is a is is a hall of fame block field goal guy he's a guy we got to put a body on he's a guy that we can't let be disruptive because he will block a, a field goal that, i promise you and i promise you what's going to happen when they go into meetings tomorrow to watch this thing he's going to say do you guys remember on monday on wednesday when i told you that class was a block guy and he's going to show the clip and it's gonna, and, and it's going to be like I, I i just know it i know mike i know what he does um, and, and that's exactly what's going to happen. And, and I don't know what happened there. I mean, I think Christian, the long snapper, got like just he had no help. And he got you can't ask a long snapper to block Calais Campbell. It yeah. just doesn't happen. Yeah. And I, I don't think maybe he didn't get help from the guard or whatever happened. But um, that's going to be frustrating, I know, for Coach T because I guarantee those are all things that he talked about. Yep. And sure enough, it happens. Well, it's funny that you mentioned it uh, in the context in which you mentioned it because in his, in Coach T's, uh, post game presser, when he was talking about the, the block punt, he referred to Clay's Campbell. Block as, field goal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Block field goal. Uh, he, he referred to uh, Campbell as like it was just that it was like when you have a guy who's known for doing this. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. It wasn't you like a, oh, you know, the block punt. Blah 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 blah. That guy made a good play. It was like when you have a guy who's known for doing this. And so he's reiterating this as if he's like, man, I've been saying this. So to hear you say that yeah. now is very is 100%. Hilarious. They're going to have that conversation. So. Yeah. And then you have, and, and also in in Mitch, as in his press, his post game press, where he was talking about, um, you know, obviously his three three uh, interceptions in Baltimore territory. He's talking about the aggression that he has. He's like, I'm being aggressive to try to score these points. Uh, do do you mm -hmm. prefer in that space? You've already thrown one. Let's say you throw one, and you're trying to be aggressive. Are you continually trying to take those shots? Or are you you dialing it back a little bit and trying to protect the ball a little bit more? 
Well, it's tough. Um, you got to be smart, but you know, I'll, I'll, I'll use this example. I, you know, last week George Pickens was having some issues on the sideline. We all saw it, and they asked Coach T about it. Coach T said, well, "You know what? I'm okay with it. I'd rather say woe than sick him." Mike's been saying that for a long time. I'd rather say woe than sick him. Basically, meaning I'd rather a guy be aggressive, and me have to tell him woe, than than him be not aggressive and me have to tell him, hey go get him. So, if he's okay with George freaking out and, and doing all this stuff and, and causing questions in the locker room, then he has to be okay with Mitch being aggressive. Yeah. Because you'd rather say, whoa, than sick him. So, it's the, you, it's the same sort of thing. If, if Mitch is being aggressive and trying to take shots and trying to score touchdowns and, and, and doing what he can to win the game, I mean, Mitch is going out there saying, listen, I got benched earlier in the year. I'm going to go out there and prove that I, you know, I'm going to throw this ball around. I'm going to do what I can to help win this game. The throw, the touchdown to, to Pat Fryermuth. That was an aggressive throw, and he made it and it happened. Good job. He gave him a chance. He got him down the field, gave him a chance to win the game. I think that, you know, I'm sure coach is going to be mad and this, that, and other, and probably, but, but, Hey, coach, listen, you just got done saying that you don't mind a guy blowing up on the sideline and, and causing causing a lot of questions in your locker room. I guarantee those questions came up in the locker room this week. Hmm. I guarantee that guys had to answer questions, but I know George, I'm sure he didn't want to answer them. <laughs> they, they saw him out there in the – you see that presser? Ski- I didn't, but yeah, I heard yeah, about yeah. it. But I'm sure he didn't want to answer them. And it's funny, because speaking of that, I, I, I was sitting up there at the game today, and I said – I'll bow, with some people, I said, I bet you any amount of money – that within the first four plays, they try and throw George the ball. Any amount of money. Oh, bet. Because that's the way oh, it always was. Bet. Every coordinator candidate was going to do it. Tom, everybody was going to. Mm-hmm. And the first play of the game, he looked, Kenny looked to throw George the ball. Now, the DB was sitting on it, so he couldn't throw it. But I was like, there was, right? Like, he looked right mm-hmm. at him, and it wasn't there. And I was like, yep, sure enough, he was trying to get him the ball. Because you knew, that's what... That's the oldest trick in the book. The, right. the, the receiver's mad, and you want to give him the ball early to kind of get him in the game. Because if you don't, you know he's going to be mad. He's going to be right. pouting. He's, you're not going to get much from him. So it's like get him the ball early, get him involved in the game. And they tried it. But, um, but yeah, so anyway, I, I, you know, I know Mitch will feel bad, and I'm not just trying to stand up for Mitch because obviously you get in the red zone, you can't turn the ball over. Yeah. But on the, other, you know, on the other hand, you're trying to be aggressive because what's your record? And right now you're trying to create a spark. Yeah. You're trying to do something to help your team. And, um, you know, it's tough. It's one of those days that they, I'm sure Mitch wished he had a couple throws back. But, they, I mean, he and they moved the ball down the field. They just couldn't put it in. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I will say with George Pickens, dude's a freak of nature. You know He's what I mean? Good. So, yeah, I understand, I understand the appeasing the, the wide receivers, trying to, you know, mitigate tensions and attitudes. But at the same time, I, I remember when, when, uh, when Mitch threw the ball – uh, he had that, that that catch on the sideline. I was like, man, well, that's mm-hmm. that brother came back. Yeah, that brother came back. Very man. good. Yeah, um, good football player. So, so, where do we see us going from here? All right. So, I don't know. I don't. I, probably Tuesday, we'll see what happens uh, with Kenny's concussion. Well, Michael speak to the to the media on Tuesday uh, as normal more normal uh, media day. But but with uh, Kenny being a concussion protocol, he doesn't have to answer any questions. Oh, okay. So no one, nothing has to be to be spoken for till you know later in the week. I'm not sure what that looks like, but we won't know the quarterback situation till. I mean, you know, I guess you'll see who practices Wednesday. Yeah, that'll be the first. That'll be the first time probably you kind of get an understanding of who could go. Um, but it doesn't mean that that you know Mitch goes Wednesday that it's going to be him. Mm-hmm. Um, so it'll, it'll be interesting. They're going down to Carolina, a team that went on the road today and won in Seattle, which I I didn't expect to Big happen. Win. Um, like I, I thought that going down to Carolina is going to be a definite win, and then um, watching that today, man, Carolina looked really good going into Very Seattle. And win that's not an easy place to play, so we'll see what what happens next week. But it's it's a big one. They they, they can't lose another game, and then even yeah. even not lose another game, they still have to hope that that things fall right and they get in. I don't think I I don't know what the percentage is, but I, it doesn't look good. So say Kenny, it's cleared. Does this, is this boost our hopes? Does this boost our chances? Um, is are, are you just as confident in our ability to beat Carolina if Mitch is out there and and, and out there from the jump? I would be. I'd yeah. be fine with either guy. Yeah, I think both guys bring a lot of the same things. Both can run well. Both can throw well. Um, Mitch obviously has more of a veteran because he's been around, knows some stuff. But um, I, I'm just as confident as uh, with either guy in there yeah. um, because you're going to need. 
more than just the quarterback. You're going to need to be able to run the ball. You need your defense to step up. You need guys to make plays. Um, so I don't think you're asking your quarterback, whichever one it is, to do too much. Yeah, and, and honestly, man, Kennedy's been improving. I, if you look at the stats, he's had mm-hmm. 100 and, what, 28 passes without an interception, right? He had 16 quarters of football with nine turnovers before the bye week. After the bye week, he gets 12 quarters of football with zero turnovers. Getting more comfortable. Right, so he's mm-hmm. getting in there. He's fi- finding that groove. The offense is getting a little bit more comfortable with him. So uh, w- we we lose against Carolina, mm-hmm. right? What does that mean for our playoff picture? Oh, zero. I We're think done. I assume, yeah, I think it's zero. And then what happens? I think for it's the rest minimal of the right now because I feel like I feel like th- this entire season, at some point, maybe week four or five, we're like, all right, it's a rebuilding. W- uh-huh. What did uh, what did Pounce say? It's a reload. Reload. You don't rebuild. Don't reload, reload. reload. It's a reloading season, mm-hmm. right? And so if you know the playoffs are out of the picture because you're still fighting because you could win out and then you know a miracle happen. Uh, if that doesn't happen, where do you see the team? for the rest of the season well that'll be interesting because i don't think there's quitting the guys like i know i know cam and tj won't quit i'm I'm, i don't know a lot of other guys on offense because to know what sure i I don't think pat will quit i you know guys like that zach and them um i don't think either quarterback will quit you know i so i don't expect guys to quit but it'll be interesting to see um you know that's something when i was playing in, in all those years we always used to joke like oh uh, you know, you're going into week 16 at the time or 15, and some of these teams, like the Browns, were always out of it. And you were like, "Oh, they, they've already shipped their cars down to Florida." Like we used to joke, <laughs> like their car, their cars are already down in Florida. And so, like, that's one thing I, that we would like. Yeah. I take pride in is that we never did that because we never, we're never really out of it. Yeah. You know, we fought all the way to the end. And so, if they're eliminated for sure, it'll be interesting to see if. If anybody does, I think the majority of the guys, maybe nobody will. I, 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 I don't. We won't know until we watch it. And you might not even really be able to see it. It might only be guys like coaches will be able to see it because they'll be able to watch the film and see like, hey, listen, you know what is this? But um, I hope no one does. But um, at the same time, um, man, my boy Josh Allen got to stop jumping. Like he's he's a madman. He's my MVP pick. Jeez, that was Josh. wild. Um, so anyway. I just I, I hope that um, that they fight all the way to the end. I, I assume and think they will, but it'll be different. It'll be interesting to to have potentially three or four games left in the regular season and know that you're not potentially going to make it. Like, yeah. what's that going to look like for this team? Yeah, I don't know. That's a great. I, I hope I'd love to see them win out and have a like a this like this little. So you're saying there's a chance? Yeah, like, that'd be awesome to see. No, I, no, I agree. I agree, my brother. Well, it's been a uh, a long day for us Steelers fans. Yeah, it has been a long day. Um, but we are loyal and faithful nonetheless. I mean, even though I spent the entire first half of this episode talking about how I'm a 49er fan. <laughs> <laughs> I live in Pittsburgh. All right. I'm loyal to the city in which I live. As long as we're not playing the 49ers, we'll be okay. Do you have... Uh, I need to read this note. Oh, yeah. So we... Do, Quickly. I, it, l- well, let's do this real quick. So we're going to we're gonna land this plane. We're at a buck 30 almost here. Okay. Um, why don't we just sample his beer real quick? Oh, we're going to sample it? Yeah. Beautiful. So, so read this. So I'll say this while, while you're doing that real quick. Um, if, if you guys have a beer that you, you want to send in to the show that we, we can try here on the show, you want to see Ben's response, or if you have a beer that you love and you just want to share it with Ben here, uh, you can do that. The address to send that in is going to be in the link. It's, it's going to be in the description. Excuse me. There won't be a link. It'll be in the description. You can send it there, and then uh, we, we'll try it on the show. We'll share our thoughts with it. This was actually sent in from uh, a fan who did just that. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go grab the beer. He, I'll give you the camera, well, and you can go I ahead and read it. I'm producer now. Oh, look at you. Um, and thanks to Creekside, I'll again for helping us with all this stuff um this is a a short letter we got from uh, a gentleman named frank gagliardo i think i probably said that perfect frank gagliardo gagliardo probably did the beer is not a christmas beer but that's okay because we'll try anything except for stouts um, this is a Blonde Ambition Ale from Great South Bay Brewery in Bay Shore, New York. Uh, and he gives a quick description. It says, this beer pours a clear, deep yellow, flavored with apricot, and it's floral and almost perfumey. It's simple, fruity, and refreshing. Sounds like, um, <laughs> sounds right up my alley. Simple, fruity, and refreshing. Um, thanks, Frank. Um, He's a fan of the show, and obviously um, 
a fan of mine because he sent a picture of a tattoo that he has on his arm. What's that tattoo look like? Oh, wow. Here, put it in the beer can. See if we can't get it. That is a picture of you. That's a tattoo of me. That's a very detailed picture, man. Here, go there. Yeah. You guys get it. <laughs> you guys get it. That's me. The, deta- the details on point. Here, it I'll is. give you this too. This is the beer that he sent in. Whoa, 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 whoa! We, that, listen, that's okay. A we don't risky. need that. This, uh, Frank, it's this a is a family show. This Frank. A family show. I didn't Frank. even know that, Frank. I didn't know that was on the label. That one's on me. All right. Why? Either angle? way. Either way. Tattoo was Just better. A bathing suit. Um, but thanks, Frank. We're gonna try your beer. So, all right. Let's send stuff in. What do you say? This was a clear yellow. <laughs> Simple, fruity, and refreshing. What hey, more do you need? When I think about football, with Ben Roethlisberger, simple, <laughs> so. fruity, and refreshing. We need, we need, a, we need a shirt. Sure, it's a simple football fruit. and like this on the back, it just says simple, simple fruity, fruity, and refreshing. refreshing. No stouts. Merch. merch. Hey, we're out here, Nemo. Nemo you know we have merch, right? We need merch. We what? have merch. I know. Like we you need, should buy something, merch. Nemo, why aren't you wearing any of our merch? <laughs> I'm not wearing any either, Nemo. I mean. Let me guess. It's delicious. It's delicious. Yeah. <laughs> it's delicious. It's Frank, right? It's is delicious. it simple, fruity, and refreshing? Yes, it is very. You could, I could drink what this What do you mean fruity, day. though? Like, what kind of fruit? Apricot. You just read that, bro. I taste apricots. Do you really? Yeah. Have you... Be honest. You ever had a real apricot? In it, or is it apricot? Apricot. Is it, is it like amen, amen? It's apricot. It's like acorn. Not not acorn. Akron? Akron? No. That's not good. That's is yeah. It? That's it, it is. It is very refreshing. It's very light. And it's simple, fruity, and refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. Is, I told you. It's that good. is apricot, man. I told you. You ever had apricot? Yeah. <laughs> I've had apricot paste. Fig paste. <laughs> it's called a callback. It's a comedy thing. See, oh. I'm out here. Um, I, I feel like I've tasted this before. Lively spear in a can, bubbly, fruity, fresh. I don't bubble what does that taste like? It's perfect choice for the beach, boat, and barbecue. See, footballing. Perfect for the beach, beach boat, boat, and barbecue. barbecue. That's all we need, dog. <laughs> we're getting, Frank, thanks. We're getting all kinds of thoughts from merch here. Yes. Hey, Frank. Frank, listen, if we end up making a shirt, don't try and come like, claim it, bud. Oh, yeah. We'll put your name on it. <laughs> we'll put the tattoo. <laughs> we can put the picture of the tattoo on Sweetness it. Sweetness will leave you wanting more. I've had, I've had a beer that tastes okay. just like that before. Really? Yeah, that's delicious. I like it. Yeah, well, I'll land this plane for us. Yeah, all right. It, take it, take us home. So, like I said, if you guys have a beer that you guys want us to try on the show, please send that in. The address will be in the in the description below. Also, if you are not already, please go follow f- at Footballing with Ben on Instagram. There, we have exclusive content. We do beer lists, so we drop all the beers that we're doing here on the show. We drop them before the show airs, so you can go grab them and drink along with us. We also have merch, as this man right here is wearing. Ooh, that's a nice shirt right there. What is that, Egyptian cotton? Football. No, it is not. But it is still comfortable. <laughs> it is. Yes. So you can do all that. And we appreciate your guys' time. We appreciate all the love and support that you guys have given uh, this man over 18 years and this show. And we will see you next week. And thank you before I sign off. Yeah, man. Coors Banquet, Creekside, Crocs. Because <laughs> I have mine on <laughs> I know with you socks. Do. Um, and no, thank you um, again to Pouncy and Debo for coming on the show. Uh, I think next week we're going to have another special guest on. We're going to kind of potentially cross over into a different sport. Oh, are we finally doing cricket? Roby. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, thank you so much again to all the fans who watch this and all the people that have subscribed, um, that follow us and, and enjoy this. And it, it's so fun when we go places and people say, man, we love the show. And so that's what we do it because we can do this without doing this. We can just sit down. We, we do this we anyway. Used to. We used to so do this. So we're just trying to uh, enjoy it with you all. So thank you guys very much for being a part of this. Nima, thanks for being our studio audience. <laughs> we hold up little signs that say like applause and clap. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but um, anyway... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> <Nailed it. laughs>